What's up? Welcome to your Buckeye Rush Hour for a Friday, March 29th, 2024. How's everybody doing? Lovely to see you again. It's been a while, I know. Let's get into it. We got a lot to cover here. Uh, first of all, uh, before I forget, I want to send a thank you out to everybody uh, who uh, sent me their thoughts and prayers uh, on my wife's mother's passing. Um otherwise known as my mother-in-law. Uh, but I appreciate, I, I read each and every one of them to my wife and uh, she was very thankful. She asked me to pass along her, her thank yous. So we appreciate you. And, uh, and uh, she's doing well. Uh, my wife's doing well and, um, you know, she's back at it. So uh, working helps, I guess, kind of take your mind off things and uh, she, she'll be, uh, she'll be fine. So thank you again. Anyways, let's get to the show here. Um, happy uh, Good Friday. Why is, why is it just a Good Friday? Shouldn't it be called like Great Friday or Amazing Friday, Excellent Friday? Seems like good is you know, just okay, average. But anyway, uh, happy Good Friday to you all. And uh, hope you have a good Easter on Sunday. We will be live Sunday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Me, Jeff, and Sean. Um, hopefully, I'll be here. I know that. Um, unless we have another family emergency. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, anyways, uh, hope to see you there, YouTube Live. Uh, if you don't have anything going on with the family events and whatnot. Um, Billy, I'm sure you're probably uh, doing an Easter egg hunt for yourself. Uh, PC. What are you doing, PC? Uh, anyways, everybody else um, have a great weekend, but uh, let's let's kick it off. We got a lot to get into. We got Student Appreciation Day tomorrow, Saturday for like a couple hours inside the Woody. A huge recruiting weekend. We're going to touch on that. Um, and the media will be in in the Woody. I think I don't think they're allowed to live tweet or anything like that or shoot live video, but, um, after the, after the, the kind of scrimmage practice thing is over, it's not a, it's not a real scrimmage, but after the practice is over, um, you'll, you'll get a, just a flood of info, um, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I don't know where, wherever, uh, but anyways, um, then we're also going to talk recruiting. We got a commitment coming tomorrow night, 6 30 PM Eastern TJ Alford, Vero Beach linebacker. Uh, did did somebody uh, say that Ohio State doesn't recruit defense anymore? I, I never said that. I would never say such a thing, except last year um, and year after that. All right, let's get into it. I'll get to your comments and your questions in the chat, I promise. First off, you know how we do it here. I kick you off a topic. Today's topic is D-line depth and Coach Larry Johnson, his uh, his – Number one priority is building that depth, and we're going to get into why that's crucial, and uh, then we'll talk some recruiting. So, uh, so Larry Larry Johnson's focus this spring is to build that D line depth. Uh, we know that in order for the Buckeyes to win the national championship, you got to play up to seventeen games. Sounds like a nightmare, I know. Um, so the Buckeyes will, will need to be much deeper on the defensive line than they were last year. I, I'm going to run through snap counts, and I'm going to compare uh, the Buckeye D-line snap counts to some other of the top schools in the country. So uh, LJ knows that his four top four D-linemen give him the best starting foundation of a D-line in the country. Don't give me the cheaters. I don't want to hear it. So uh, I'm talking all four across the board. All four starters. Uh, they could have all left for the NFL draft. Uh, so building be building behind the starters is huge, especially in this conference where we play a lot of run heavy teams. You know, um, Larry Johnson just said earlier this week, "quote uh, That's what we're talking about: a chance to play 17 games. We've never done that before. Early in the season, we may play a lot more young players to make sure we can get to the home stretch." I think our older guys understand what we're up against. Uh, we don't have jealousies in our room. We have a bunch of guys who want to win. And if you can help us win, we want to help. We want you to help us win. 
That's the attitude of the room. We have to rotate. We have to do it early in the season to give us a chance to get to the back end and do what we want to do. And I am all for getting to the back end to do what I want to do. Enough said there, I think. Um, so last year uh, was different in terms of rotation up front for, for Larry Johnson. Uh, he shortened his rotation quite a bit. Um, maybe he was overcorrecting from the previous year where he was rotating too much in 2022. But he also had inexperienced dudes behind the starters last year. So it could have been a little bit of both. I don't know. Um, but he did take some in 2022 about his his uh, extensive rotation. But um Ohio State's finished with only five defensive linemen that have played at least 200 snaps. That's tied for the fewest since 2014. The Buckeyes have had five linemen play 200 or more snaps in 2020 when they only played eight games. Um, now, the top 10 teams in the CFP rankings last year, uh, the Buckeyes had the fewest D linemen who logged 200 snaps. Uh Every other team had at least seven. Uh, Oregon had the most with 10, and then the Cheaters had eight. Um, but all four playoff teams averaged eight defensive linemen who played at least 200 snaps. I've got uh, a list here. Like I said, Oregon, number one, with uh, 10 defensive linemen that played 200. Georgia had nine. Texas, nine. Michigan, the Cheaters, sorry, eight. Washington, eight. Florida State, eight, Penn State, eight, Bama, seven, Missouri, seven, Ohio State, five. Those were your top 10 in the CFP rankings. Uh, so the five-man stable of JT and Jack at, at the ends, and then your, your tackles, Ty Leak, Mike Hall, and uh, Ty Hamilton, mostly had good years last year. Um, but you have to ask the question, were they at their best in the most important moments? You could also ask another question. Did the workload over the course of the season wear them down? Let me know what you guys think. Do you think they're at their best throughout the year? All 13 games? I don't know. Um, so Mike Hall's gone. We know that. So for the Buckeyes to achieve their goals this year, more players need to step up on that defensive line. Uh, Coach Johnson admits that youth affected his rotation last year. He said this week, quote, I wasn't quite ready to throw those young guys in last year and go battle. You got to be smart. You don't want to put them in a position where they're handicapped. And by that, I mean failing and feeling that they let everybody down. They can carry that. I'm really good about not pull, putting freshmen in a position where they feel like they have a chance to fail. I want them to be successful. Now, some of those guys have some experience, so let's go play. That's what we're going to try to do this season. Uh, so you got third-year defensive ends, Caden Curry, Kenyatta Jackson. They need to show that they can be reliable in backing up Jack and JT, right? We haven't really seen a lot of them. Uh, then you got Taiwan Malone. He's in his fourth year. Third-year guy, Hero Canoe, also at tackle. Uh, they need to – they are expected to contribute. Um then you got the second year tackles, Caden McDonald, Jason Moore. They have shown flashes in spring. Um, Larry Johnson said about Jason Moore, quote, he's six foot five, he's 295 pounds. He's the ideal three technique in our system. It's just a matter of him having confidence. Sometimes you get here and it's bigger than you think it is, and that can set you back. Now in the spring, we're challenging him. Every day has to be a good day for Jason Moore, and that's what we want to see. There's a lot of guys who who we like what's going on on going on right now, but if someone is making a jump, it's Jason Moore. So huge words of encouragement there for, for Jason Moore. I would love to see nothing more than him and Caden McDonald crack that too deep and, and get some serious snaps this season. Uh, Again, it's all about consistency. We talk about it all the time, uh, especially when you're talking younger players. Um, but <clears throat> talking about uh, snap counts compared to the rest of the country here, um, the top 10 teams 
these are individual players on the on the top 10 CFP teams. Uh, leading the way was edge rusher Braylon Trice from Washington. He had 925 snaps last year. That's insane. But uh, JT was right behind him with 677. Uh, Alabama's Justin Ebogi. Ebogi? Ebogi? Hey, would you call me? Uh, he had 657. <clears throat> then Dallas Turner for Bama, 647. Ty Leak right in there in the top five with 645. Johnny Walker Jr., my guy, um, edge rusher from Missouri, 625. Then uh, Zion Tapulo Fatui, edge rusher from Washington, of course, 624. Jack Sawyer up there as well in the top 10, 610 snaps. And then Patrick Payton, edge rusher from Florida State, 608 snaps and an easy to pronounce name. Um, so, the defensive tackle position is the one that's in the spotlight right now for the Buckeyes. Uh, Curry and Jackson almost hit 200 snaps last year. Uh, so now they're in their junior years. They should be able to handle an increased workload, and it's going to be expected. Um, but now tackle is a different story. You got uh, Taiwan Malone played 106 snaps over two years at Ole Miss. Uh, again, playing baseball and football at the same time is not a recipe for success, I think. He's, he's a perfect example of that. Uh, but uh, he only had 49 snaps last year. That was his first season with the Buckeyes. Uh, Canoe, Moore, and McDonald combined for only 144 snaps. So, again, not a lot of experience between those three guys. And Hero Canoe had most of those snaps. Then you got uh, second-year tackle Will Smith Jr. Don't forget about him. He's looking to push his way into the rotation, but um, he didn't play in a game last year. He dealt with an injury all season. So um, with Ty Leak logging the 645 snaps last year, the next closest tackle on a top-10 team was uh, Oregon's Brandon Dorless. He had 587. Uh, so only one other tackle on a top-10 team was uh, Texas's uh, Tavondre Sweat. He had – 500. Yeah, he was over 500 at 503. So um, he was the only other one that was over 500 in the country. So uh, Larry Johnson wants the younger group of these D tackles to show they can play between 25 and 35 snaps per game. So he can play them early and often. Uh, that will keep the starters fresh for the long haul the entire season. Uh, Larry Johnson said this week, quote, uh, that's what we're trying to see. I'm really just pushing these young guys. We kind of shut down the older guys a little bit to let the young guys get some work and get ready to go play, which was expected. I mean, you don't need to see much out of Jack, JT, Ty Lee, and Ty, you know, in, in the spring. Um, so I did some running of the numbers quickly. Uh, I busted out a calculator and everything was really great. Um, did you know your phone has a calculator on it? Pretty awesome. Anyway, uh, defensive end, JT Tuomolo last year had 673 snaps in 13 games. So that aver averages out to 52 snaps per game. Now, in a projection of 16 games this year, that comes out to 832 snaps. So you have 832 snaps approximately, give or take, obviously, um, that you need to divide up between first team, second team, and possibly third team at defensive end. So 52 snaps a game, you can, you can cut that in half. If Larry's math is correct, he wants to get the young guys in there at 25 to 35 snaps per game. That's what you're looking at, about half half of JT's uh, snaps. Uh, then Tyleek last year, 642 snaps in 13 games. That averages out to 49 snaps per game. So in a 16-game season coming up in 2024, that's 784 snaps. So, again, you've got to divide that up. Half of Tyleek's workload is going to have to be supported by the young guys. So – doesn't matter, DND tackle, about half of, of the snaps are going to have to be second and third teamers. So these guys are going to have to get their shit together. It's up to Coach Johnson to get their – make them get their shit together. So, uh, yeah, that, that it's going to be interesting, this this long season, man. You, you I don't know how they 
they really got to expand the rosters, like more scholarships. You got to increase that by like 10. You're going to have so many injuries over 16 games. I realize it's only two teams that are making it the full 16 or 17 games potentially. So I know it's only two teams, but, you know, getting into that playoff is no, is no picnic when you go a 12 week season plus yeah, if you make it to the championship game in your conference, that's 13, you know, it, the shit really stacks up and we've seen the, the Buckeyes have problems with injuries in the past, you know, so we'll see how it plays out. Coach Johnson, um, it's on you, big man. So, uh, I, I feel confident in these young guys. You just got to get them in there early. I'm talking week one, man. Get get them in there in the first quarter. So uh, I, I think if if Larry's being truthful with us in his quotes, I think we're definitely going to see the young guys early and often and throughout the year. So, All right. Oh, let's check on the chat, and then we're going to get into some recruiting. See how you guys are doing here, and I will take a drink. All right. Billy says, let's go, Buckeyes. Odysseus says, O-H. Billy says, I O. I say I O. Uh, Billy says, an Alfred out and an Alfred in. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> Don't ask me about the running back position, <laughs> coach. <laughs> uh, okay. Um. Odysseus says D-line has the potential to be the Buckeyes all-time greatest. Yeah, definitely. Uh, from top to bottom, left to right, across the board, the ends and the tackles are all high caliber. You know, we don't have a Chase Young or a Bosa necessarily at, at D-end, but everybody across the board is, is top shelf, you know, consistent. But um, Billy says – uh, till the duck game, we should be able to rotate a lot on the D-line and everywhere else. Yeah, for sure. And, and same goes for the offense. Yeah, we're going to talk about the offense eventually. We'll get to the O-line and stuff. And like last year, I think, um, was it Fryer and Simmons? I think they both played every snap. It was like 825 snaps each. So when you calculate that out to a 16-game season, with the playoffs and everything, it's like over a thousand snaps, man. You got to get guys out. I mean, especially early in the year, September, when it's still pretty hot in Columbus, you know? Um, yeah. It's, you got to get guys rest early. Thank God for this garbage schedule, right? <laughs> Sorry. Ticket season ticket holders. Odysseus says, um, need a happy medium of rotation from 22 and 23. Yeah. Yeah. I think having the young guys with a second year under their belts, you know, like McDonald and Jason Moore, those guys having a second year really helps. So, um, and then third year guys, third and fourth year guy, fourth year guy, Malone, third year guy, hero canoe. These guys got to, got to step up now. We need it. Uh, Billy says, do we bring back the Jack? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what to think about the Jack. Hey folks, please hit the like button on your way in the door, please. And thank you. Uh, make sure you're subscribed, please. Thank you. Um, I don't know about the Jack position. I, I don't know. <laughs> I have no opinion on the Jack only because I wasn't super impressed when they first rolled it out. Um, uh, Jack Sawyer didn't have a great year. Um, I need to see it be productive. I don't care who plays it. If you want to move CJ Hicks to that, that's fine. Mitchell Melton is good at that, apparently. Um, they've been recruiting to it. They've been recruiting to that position. So um, I'm not a fan of it yet. So I need, I need to see a reason why we need the Jack. Um, I would say probably over Larry's cold, dead body is when we'll, we'll see the Jack. Anyways, Jeremiah says, hey there, Joe, the Ohio State football spring game coming up will be an interesting with all the returning players <clears throat> and players acquired in the portal. Can't wait to see this team come together. I agree. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a fun one. Um, you're going to see a lot of the young guys 
especially along the lines of scrimmage corners. You're going to see the young guys. Um, who else? Probably see a couple of young receivers in there. Um, and then I think you're going to see all the quarterbacks, which will be fun. You know, um, so we're, we're hearing a lot of things about Julian saying, I don't know how true it is. I mean, it's freaking practice, right? Talking about practice. Um, Odysseus says, feels like setting the edge was a weakness for the backup defensive ends. All right. I, you could be right. I, I need to go back and dig up the old tape from last year, but um, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised because they're a little bit lighter, lighter in the shorts, Caden uh, and Kenyatta, but uh, they, they put on some weight over the off season, I believe. So yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, Let's get better at that. You got to set the edge. Got to you got to shut down that run. You know, um, Billy says with all our D talent all over the field, I expect Knowles to use a lot of different fronts. It's possible. I don't know how serious he is about that five man front, the double eagle, which is an excellent bourbon. I will probably never taste. You ever heard of double eagle rare? It's like freaking twenty grand a bottle, but. Uh, that's the first thing I thought of when he said double E. I was like, what? You have some? So I'm going to stop by. Um, no, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I would like to see us just be good at our base defense at all positions. You know, doesn't have to be the jack. We don't need the jack. We don't need uh, extra shit. Let's just be consistently good at stopping the run in our base defense. Can we do that with just a four-man front, two linebackers, or if you want to bring in a third linebacker, you know, and go 4-3, pull Jordan Hancock out of the slot, off the field. I just want to see consistency in our base defense because um, it's it's been hit and miss here and there, you know. Um, Odysseus says missed opportunities for rotation last year versus WKU, for example. Yeah, there were multiple games. I mean, we can point to the schedule where the Buckeyes were up big in the first half in multiple games and did not play any young guys. You know, it, it was especially frustrating. Uh, I have snap counts here, actually, while we're talking about it. Um, uh, Youngstown State's another one, right? Uh, Indiana, another one. You got – uh, JT and Jack getting almost 50 snaps in those three games, Indiana, Youngstown, and, and Western Kentucky. Um, then Kenyatta, Caden Curry, they're down in the teens, like 17, 16. Uh, they did get 20, up to 23 by Caden in Western Kentucky. But um, then you got Mitchell Melton only getting eight snaps. Um, Amari Abor, that's why he transferred out. He got like five and three. Didn't even play against Indiana. Um, defensive tackles. Hero Canoe got seven, ten, and seven. Jaden McKenzie transferred 13, 11, 10. Taiwan Malone, five, seven, five. Uh, Caden McDonald did not play the first two, then four. Uh, Jason Moore, same thing. Did not play the first two, then three. So, yeah, uh, these, these blowouts – uh, Purdue's another one, you know, uh, you did get plenty of snaps here. You got up over 20 for Kenyatta and Caden. Um, but then your D tackles hero just had 12, uh, McKenzie, 14, Taiwan Malone, seven, Caden McDonald, 12, uh, DNP for, for Jason Moore, uh, Rutgers, very few snaps for Kenyatta and Caden. Uh, D tackles, Hero, 12, Taiwan Malone, 7, you know, Michigan State, same deal. Uh, Jack and JT, maybe you wanted to rest them a little bit, but um, Kenyatta and Caden just got like 11 and 15. D tackles got like 5, none, 6. So, yeah. Yeah. Plenty of opportunities missed. I agree with you. Um, 
Odysseus says, need a lighter body type for the Jack. Made no sense to have Sawyer put on weight and play the Jack. Yeah, I didn't understand that either. They got him up to like, what, 265, 270. He looked bloated and, and slow. You you got to be fast, faster, you know. Um, I didn't understand that either, Odysseus. I don't know what the hell they were thinking, but um, yeah. Um. Definitely need a lighter body type, like uh, Joshua Mickens, the defensive lineman in the was it twenty three class? Yeah, uh, he was recruited for the Jack specifically. Um, yeah, Billy, you got it. Uh, Justin Hill in the twenty twenty five also recruited for the Jack position. So um, it seems like Lauren Ice would be the main coach for that Jack position because it's it's an off ball kind of position. So I don't know. It's kind of a stand up guy, you know, but uh, yeah. Yeah. The Buckeyes have recruited for, for that position. I mean, who else? I guess those are the only two guys recently that, that they've recruited for that job. Mickens and then Justin Hill in 25. So We'll see. Um, let's talk some Cruton. Let's get into some Cruton. Huge weekend for the Buckeyes with with the big student appreciation weekend. You want to bring in the, the recruits, let them see all the craziness. But um, first of all, we do have some bad news. Uh, Javon Boggs decommitted this week, the wide receiver out of Cocoa, Florida, over on the East Coast. East Coast is trash. I've always said that. I hate the East Coast of Florida. Um so he visited, if anybody's living on the East Coast of Florida, though, you're cool. Um, he visited uh, Missouri last week. He'll be at Georgia this week, and he's got a trip to Notre Dame coming up. He's probably going to have a lot more. So the Buckeyes don't really have, like, any black and white, hard, fast rules about commits taking visits to other schools. But this was a case where it felt like, you know, this guy's loading up on visits. And it's like, you know, they, you know. It's not a big loss, I bet, is what Brian Hartline is thinking. And uh, it's probably best to move on at this point instead of waiting until the fall, you know. But fear not. We have other wide receivers in the hopper. Uh, Brian Hartline hosted five-star prospect DeCorian Moore this month. Uh, Kalik Lockett was in town last week. Then you got a wide receiver out of New Jersey, Quincy Porter. It's not talked about as much, um, but he's a player the Buckeyes are high on. Um, then you got Illinois uh, stud receiver, Taylor Taylor. He'll be on campus uh, tomorrow, and he's a top target for the Buckeyes. Then uh, last Tuesday, or this Tuesday, I don't know, Tuesday, Oregon uh, lost a top-ranked receiver commit, Adrian Wilson. He reopened his commitment, his recruitment. So um, I did want to check on him real quick. He's from Texas, uh, six foot 170, Pflugerville, Texas. Sounds made up, doesn't it? <laughs> Pflugerville. Um, he's a four-star, a 9466, nationally ranked number 116, number 15 receiver, number 19 player in Texas. Uh, he does have three crystal balls in to TCU. So I don't know why. Maybe he lives near there. Uh, but the Buckeyes were really high on Wilson before he committed to Oregon, and uh, I, I imagine you're going to watch the Buckeyes get back in the mix on that one. So a um, so little update there on receivers. All is lot not lost. Uh, then we got Saturday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern is the T.J. Alford commitment. Uh, I'm not sure where that's being carried. I'll have to check. Um I'll I'll post something on the community board here on YouTube if uh, if I can track down. It's probably 24/7's live stream. So this weekend, let's talk visitors. This will be uh, the 30th and the 31st. So a Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. These are unofficials, all unofficials. Um, everybody's paying out of their own pocket. Hmm. So first off, you got. Um, this guy never leaves Columbus, I don't think. Um, Ohio quarterback, Tavia St. Clair, the big man. Uh, then you got coming into town, even without a running back coach, 
Bo Jackson, Ohio running back from Cleveland, coming in. I wonder if Ryan Day is going to play the part of Tony Alford or, or what. Um, then you got some big time receivers. Um, we're in really good shape for Florida wide receiver Jamie French, the five star out of uh, Jacksonville. Then you got uh, Orlando, Florida wide receiver Vernie Three Sticks, Vernell Brown, the third. This is his second visit in the last two weeks. Buckeyes are in really good shape there. Then you got uh, Texas wide receiver Dalen McCutcheon. I really like him. Illinois wide receiver Taylor Taylor, we mentioned. California wide receiver Philip Bell. Uh, California wide receiver Marcus Harris. Then you got Florida wide receiver Donovan. Oh, no. Ol Olabodi. That's what we're going with. All right. Also visiting this weekend, North Carolina tackle five-star David Sanders. Except for Ohio State, all of his spring visits are near home, near North Carolina. Bama, Clemson, Georgia, Tennessee, and South Carolina. Those are the schools he's visiting this spring. Now, we do have a little ace in the hole here. Um, he's a big Paris Johnson Jr. fan. And his mother, Monica, is going to be on campus this weekend at, at the uh, – I don't know if she'll be at the Student Appreciation Affair, but um, she'll be on campus. And uh, she and Paris were instrumental in getting David Sanders in his first visit back in April of 2022 on campus. So maybe uh, Monica can work some magic there. We do appreciate the Johnson family. Um <clears throat> Then you got 2025 Ohio offensive tackle Buckeye commit Carter Lowe will be in town. So maybe he can work on David Sanders a bit. Then you got Maryland defensive tackle Trent Wilson, Florida defensive end London Merritt, crystal balls to Ohio state. Uh, then we got uh, Ohio state commit linebacker out of Akron Hoban, Eli Lee. Then you got Texas linebacker Riley Pettijohn. Then you got Texas slash Ohio corner slash safety, Dorian Brew. Big, big visit for him. Um, Maryland safety, Fahim Delane. Chris Balls for the Buckeyes there too. Texas safety, Jonah Williams. And then California safety, Jaden Hudson. So those guys are all going to be visiting. I don't know how you keep track of all these guys. <laughs> if you're the recruiting coordinators, sounds like a nightmare to me. But hey, make them happy. Let's get back to the chat. Um, Odysseus says, "Scum fans making sure, making a, sure, make a big deal about Boggs' decommitment when their class is ranked in the 30s. Yeah, typical standard operating procedure. Um, and they'll also tell you that everybody came back because uh, they love the school, not because they got paid. Then you see a quote from Will Johnson: the "Reason he came back." It's for the NIL money. <laughs> so which is it, folks? Uh, I love I love the cheater fans. Yeah, talking out of both sides of their mouths at all times. Uh, Odysseus says, Bo Jackson is all Buckeye, even though cheater fans say otherwise. I agree. Uh, I think the only reason he visited uh, the cheaters this week is because Tony Alford's there. I mean, but I don't I don't think you're going to you're going to swing um, a Cleveland kid to to Michigan. When has that ever happened? Anyway, um, Pam says, what's up, Pam? Uh, she says, uh, Bo Jackson and Marquise Davis both visited Team Up North, the scum. Yeah, I know. I'm not too worried about them. Maybe Marquise Davis, maybe. But I think Bo Jackson is a Buckeye lock. Um, so I feel good about that. Um. Billy says, Mark Gibbler said Alfred wasn't high on Jackson and we're in better position to land Bo with Alfred gone. Yeah, I, I think I heard that too. Um, and that's fine. I, I know Ryan Day is, is leading that recruitment of Bo Jackson and he's always been high on Bo Jackson. So um, I'm going to trust Ryan Day. And, you know, now Marquise Davis, I really like him. And I, I think. Just from I don't I don't know I gotta need, I need to find out I got like ten thoughts coming out of my mouth at one time um, I got to check on Jordan Davison 
there was talk that he was going to visit the cheaters, and then there's talk he wasn't. So he definitely is not coming here. He, he would have been here by now. Um, so last weekend, Jordan Davison was at Alabama along with David Sanders. It's not great. Um, yeah. I don't see anything. Oh, his teammate, Abdul Sanders Jr., teammate from modern day, uh, committed to Alabama last week. Not a huge deal, but um, yeah, I need to find out what's going on with his visits. He did not visit on the 27th. 24 7 is wrong, I, I think. Um, he was supposed to visit on the 27th to April 1st. Remember, he's bringing the whole damn family. They're going to do a four day or four day excursion in, in uh, Columbus. 24 7 is wrong, I think. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure he did not make that visit. Um, let me try on three real quick. I don't. I really want to get to the bottom of this, see where the hell he's visited. Um, okay. Scouting. There's some damn visits. On three sites, sucks ass. It's not showing me his visits. Anyway, so I don't think he, he came to Columbus at all this week. Yeah, they still have – yeah, I don't think that's the case. On three, get your shit together. Sight's broke. Um, so we'll see what happens with Jordan Davison anyways. Uh, I'm curious, really curious to see what – what happens with him because I don't have a problem losing out on Jordan Davison. I don't care if he goes to the cheaters or not. As long as we can get Marquise Davis and Bo Jackson, I feel good about that. And if you can get a third, great. I wouldn't, uh, I would be a bit surprised though. Um, checking uh, Rivals website. They're not up to date on visits either. So, I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I agree, Billy. Um, Pam says, oh, oh, Odysseus says Uncle T bought their nanny. Sure did, didn't he? What, what, whatever happened to that guy? He was He was popular for a hot minute. Pam says, hope so. Yep. Pam says, I don't think we'll get Jordan now that uh, now thanks to Alford. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up going. He he could even end up at Bama. I wouldn't rule that out. Um Billy says Jackson and Davis would be a great class. I think so too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I I would lean Alabama right now for Davison. But yeah, let's get the in-state guys to stay home, come to Columbus, you know, um at least keep them from going to the to the cheaters. Yeah, I'm I'm just checking up here. Okay, so this this article on GBM Wolverine, where the fuck that is, uh, says Michigan hosts five-star running back Jordan Davison. Of course, they're already patting Tony Alford on the back. They used to say that he sucked, right, when he was with Ohio State. Um, this is from a day ago. And still, Texas still has those crystal balls in there. 
for what it's worth. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's up in the air. He hasn't tweeted anything out recently uh, since last weekend at, at Bama. So we'll have to wait and see. I got nothing. I'd take him for sure. But isn't Bo Jackson ranked higher? Yeah. Um, Billy says winning a natty always helps recruiting unless you're the team up north. Yes, they do have a, a fantastic talent for ruining momentum, don't they? Their own momentum, not others' momentum. They ruin their own momentum. <laughs> They're so good at that. Um, Pam says, do you think we'll get uh, Justin Hill? Yes, I say yes. I think he's a Buckeye, strong Buckeye lean. Let me go back to my uh, my list here. Yeah, we don't have any crystal balls in for him yet, but he's been to Ohio State quite a bit. And uh, Laura Nitus is a lead recruiter, obviously, there. So he's suddenly getting offers from everybody now. You know, I just got an offer from Florida State a little while ago. He had an unofficial to Alabama. Um, USC, but I still feel really good uh, about the Buckeyes there. I'm surprised nobody's crystal balled them to Ohio State, honestly. Winton Woods, we do pretty well at, at Winton Woods. Got a good relationship there, so yeah, I, I feel good about him. And we need we need the depth. I mean, as these guys rotate out, like uh, you know, just looking at the scholarship chart here, the grid. Um, at defensive end, you got Mitchell Melton will be gone next year. Taiwan Malone, uh, Tyleek will be gone. See, Malone should be back for one more year. He redshirted. Hero will be back. Then you got McDonald, Moore, Will Smith. We haven't seen yet on the field. And just Eric Mensa is the only 2024 guy. Uh, then Dominic Kirk's almost forgot about him, but he's going to be with the D D line uh, D ends, so he could slide in, into D tackles. But as far as uh, Justin Hill goes, um, sorry, I was looking at D tackles there. Melton gone, J T Jack gone, uh, Kenyatta Caden, they'll be gone by the, probably by the time Justin Hill gets here. Then you only got Mickens, Edric Houston, and Dominic Kirk's, so. Seems like there's plenty of room, right? Uh, so let's see. Let's go back here to the chat. Yeah, I feel really good about Justin Hill. Um, Billy says, saw an interview with Hill. He has the personality for it. I like that. Great. Um, Pam says, yeah, and I've seen where USC thinks they're going to get everybody now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they go on a little bit of a run, and they think they're all of a sudden, you know, the place to be, which – it's fascinating to me. Usually, like, Ohio State had a huge problem recruiting defense before even, even Jim Knowles' first year. They could not recruit defense very well. His second year, they finally started coming around now. His third year, we can, we can recruit defense again. But USC, they just changed coordinators. They, they like, completely overhauled the defensive staff. Uh, the portal dudes are hopping in the portal left and right from their defense. So I don't know why people are committing there on defense. I really don't. Good luck. Don't be surprised if more things change, the more they stay the same. Um, back to the chat here. Um, <clears throat> Billy says, wish Grinch was still there. DC. LOL. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I don't know if this new guy is any good either. He could be. He could be just another Grinch. He was uh, Chip Kelly's DC. I don't recall UCLA being all that great. I, I can find out real quick. Let's find out. Uh, team rankings here. CFB stats. National. Let's look at scoring defense. 
rushing defense, passing defense. Let's see where UCLA is. Okay, wow. 14th in the country in scoring. My bad. I was way off. Uh, they only allowed 18.4 points a game. Respectable. Um, second in the country in rushing. Only allowed 80.77 .7 yards per game. Passing. Man, there's the UCLA I know and love. 61st, 221 yards passing allowed per game. So good against the run, but uh, look out if they start airing, airing the ball out. Odysseus says Fick hired him for some reason. Yeah, I, I heard that too. That's weird. Um, Pam says, what about this tight end Nate Roberts would suck if he chooses Miami over us? Yeah, um, I still think he's a Buckeye, strong Buckeye lean, but um, he's taking his visits, enjoying the process for sure. Um, he's the four star out of Oklahoma. Uh, 9462 still has uh four crystal balls in and all four are for the, the buckeyes Tom Loy, Steve Wilt Fong and then Bill Curlick and then an Oklahoma insider all are all having crystal ball to the buckeyes actually one just came in today the Oklahoma insider guy Colin Kennedy just put one in a few minutes ago for Ohio State. So, yeah, I feel good about Nate Roberts. Just up to him when he wants to uh, shut down the recruitment, you know, and, and join the, the the class. Um, Rick S. says Alex Grinch is now at Wisconsin with Luke Fickle. Yeah, exactly. Um, weird, isn't it? <laughs> Billy says some guys just aren't cut out to be coordinators. Uh, but still can't be good position coaches. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just like head coaches, right? Some coordinators are good coordinators, but not good head coaches. And it goes even lower. Some guys are good position coaches, not good coordinators, vice versa. So I don't know what Grinch's problem is. Um, I don't know. Maybe didn't didn't seem like they recruited well on defense. I mean, they had some big high high end dudes, five stars and shit. But I don't know if it's scheme teaching the scheme. Maybe he's not a good teacher of the scheme. You know, you could have the best scheme in the world, but if nobody understands what to do, or it's too much, you're, or you're just not a good teacher, then it, that's a problem, right? <laughs> Especially in college. Um, Odysseus says the cheaters. Bead is wrong about everything, so that might be up. Alfred is hardly surprising. Yeah, they are wrong about everything. That's why I rarely, I don't, I don't look at their stuff, especially Scam Web. Who's that other guy? I don't know. There's a bunch of, bunch of douches. At least Yoder has a, a sense of humor, and you can jab at him, and he'll jab back, but it's not like mean. He's not an asshole about it. And he doesn't try to break news like like a scam web, you know. So um Yoder is about the only the only uh, cheater fan I can tolerate. In small doses. Small doses, of course. So and they are wrong about everything. There's no doubt about it. <clears throat> All right. Kind of wind it down here. <clears throat> you guys have any plans for the weekend? Hopefully you're, you're going to be around Sunday night. Oh, let's talk more recruiting. All right. Pam says, what about Neem Offer? Guess that's his name. Oh, yeah, he's he's solid. He's a solid Buckeye. Again, you know, I was going to do some quick research on um, Jaden Woodby. Because I'm pretty sure he's taken some visits elsewhere. Um, now he does have a, 
a uh, a visit, an unofficial. He's going to be here for the spring game. One second. Um, it's reading. It would be a slot. Yeah, I don't have anything concrete on the message boards right now about that. I'll have to do some more digging. But uh, yeah, Naeem Offord is a solid Buckeye. Not Not seeing anything weird about him at all. Check that one too while we're at it. Yeah, no issues with him. He's visiting, let's see, he visited Florida. He was at Bama earlier this month. But he does have um, a visit, official visit in June. Ohio State, so I got June 21st to the 23rd, so um, I don't see any major issues. He's going to take visits. We know it's going to happen. I mean, this is just what the kids do, so um, but we'll see. I I have a lot of faith in, uh, in OG Walt. Let's see what else. Odysseus says defensive depth draft on Sunday. Yes, yes, there will be. Even if, uh, even if one of Jeff or Sean doesn't show up, we will still do the draft. Uh, and then we're going to get into the two deep at each position on the defense. Then next weekend, we'll do offense. Of course, uh, we already did our, our quick little three-round draft of the offense, but um, we, we need to do our two deep and uh, take take what we're learning from, you know, spring practices and, and all the intel. Take that, see, uh, see if that affects our two deeps, you know. So, yeah, talking too deep on the defense – I got to school Jeff and Sean on these D linemen. I'm sure we'll have a heated discussion about the Will linebacker. I really like Jason Moore. I'm starting to like him more and more. Him and Caden McDonald get some good interviews this week if you guys didn't catch them. Um, I really like, like these guys. Their, their attitude and their mindset is really positive and you know they're they're patient you know they're okay to take their time and uh jason moore had a great uh great comment he said that larry johnson was the only person that recruited him that told him he was going to be a d tackle not an edge rusher everybody else that recruited him said you're going to be an edge rusher nope larry johnson told him the truth he said your body is taking you you know, just naturally to D tackle just in your size, you know. So, and having a six five guy at D tackle is huge, man. Literally, it's huge. <laughs> you know, uh, look at what Ty Leak does, getting getting those big paws of knocking down passes and shit, um, getting leverage on those uh, O linemen in the run game. So, I really like like uh, Caden McDonald too. Uh, Three hundred and thirty pounds, man, dude. <laughs> It's it's one it's one of those things where um we're we're kind of lucky that Georgia can't take everybody <laughs> because he would be your typical Georgia defensive tackle right big dude three thirty can move quick feet all that um but you know we we're, we're lucky that uh, 
we have a good stronghold in Georgia and uh, I'll take Georgia's leftovers. If that, if Caden McDonald is, is a Georgia leftover. Yes. I'll take a four-star D tackle run, run plugger, run stopper every day of the week. Give me more of the, the them. Um, Pam says, wish we could get more offensive linemen. Yeah. Um, I don't feel great about David Sanders being a Buckeye just right, right off the top, but um, we, we got to do everything possible. You know, uh, looking at the uh, top targets, there's not a lot that, that, uh, that are interested in us. Anyways, you got uh, Avery Gatch from up in, uh, in Michigan, uh, 6'5", 275. He's a four-star. He's up in the air. I mean, I don't feel good about any offensive lineman right now. Um, and typically, you know, uh, Justin Fry sticks to the Midwest area. Look at all of our last two classes here, you know. Um, you got the Armstrong twins, Ian Moore, Indiana. Armstrong twins are from, you know, St. Ed's. Um, Gabe Van Sickle from Michigan. Uh, Luke Montgomery from the 419. Uh, Josh Padilla, Austin Severo. Uh, they did get Miles Walker out of Connecticut, but that's because Justin Fry has has a good relationship with that high school coach. Um, those are Fry's two classes, 23 and 24. Uh, before that, Tagra. Fitzpatrick, Hinsman, these guys are all Midwest guys. Uh, so, you know, when I look at the O-line recruiting, I'm assuming that we're not going too far outside the Midwest. Uh, you got an interior guy here that's a low four-star, uh, Javen McFadden from uh, the DMV. I don't know. Um, Josh Petty, he's a five-star from Georgia. That's going to be hard to pull. Scrolling Malachi Goodman, another one. He's from New Jersey. Maybe we got a shot there, Paramus. Um, so he's a four-star. Interior alignment, Chauncey Gooden from Tennessee. That's going to be a hard pull. Um, looking at O-line here. For the 25 class, Caden Strayhorn from Bradenton from IMG. Um, depends on where he's originally from, but he's a, a low four star, you know. Um, so going back up to the top here, I didn't start. Okay. So um, at first, it's going to be hard to get David Sanders out of the South. I know Charlotte's not far from Columbus. Uh, it's a short flight, like an hour or so. Uh, and then drive is, you know, multiple hours, but. Um, you got Ty Haywood from Denton, Texas. He's a high four star. I don't know about him. Uh, Michael Fasusi from Texas, another high four star. Those guys are going to be hard to pull out of Texas with um, with uh, Sark and those guys doing so well. Douglas Utu is from Bishop Gorman out in Vegas. We haven't pulled anybody from Vegas in quite a while. He's a high four star. So maybe we can reopen that pipeline. Um, yeah. We'll call it the Tate Martell pipeline. How's that sound? Uh, you got another guy from Texas, Lamont Rogers, high four star. Yeah. There's not a lot on here in the Midwest. Micah DeBose, you're not going to pull him out of Alabama, most likely. Um, so, yeah. Not looking great, but we'll see how, how things change. Uh, you, you still haven't gotten into camp season yet coming up. So guys always pop, you know, somebody, multiple people will suddenly, you know, show their growth, you know, strength and agility and all that in, in the, uh, the camps. Uh Pam says, this is why I don't care much for Fry. Yeah. I don't know if it's his fault. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. I don't know if it's all his fault. The Buckeyes really have never, the only real high-end O-lineman we've ever gotten in any 
when, no matter who the recruiter was, is somebody that had Ohio ties, like Donovan Jackson, five star from Texas, had Ohio ties. You know, um, Odysseus says, I feel Chip Kelly being OC may open up opportunities to get offensive tackles we didn't last couple years. It can't hurt, right? <laughs> You'd think it would help. <laughs> it can't freaking hurt. So, yeah. You're going to see some more names pop up on, on the offer lists uh, for Ohio State, I guarantee you. Again, let let uh, the recruiting staff get eyes on these guys again, you know, and get them on campus for camps and, and stuff. So you're going to see – you always see some kind of – guys show up later than than others but um we'll see we'll see chip kelly has to help right but all right folks hope to see you sunday night 7 30 p.m eastern here on youtube live and until then i'll talk to you later go bucks <laughs>